So this video is for families uh, who are wanting to learn more about the modified version of the DRDP um, for developmental reasons. Um, I'm gonna make this video short and quick. The first part of this developmental um, record is the social emotional development, which is the SED. So the first um, social emotional um, goal within the DRDP for a child would be, for a preschool child would be identifying of self in relationship to others. So this is uh, knowing how emotions change, uh, knowing that other people feel emotions just as they do. And the second one is social emotional development Two is social emotional understanding. So this is the actual understanding of emotions like sadness, happiness, being mad. Um, and also within those two goals is knowing that the emotions change with certain situations and that uh, certain emotions are there temporarily and that happiness is one of the emotions that we want to have most of the time. And that when things happen that we don't like or that make us upset that our emotions can change and that is okay. Uh, the next one is social emotional development. Three is relationships and social interactions with familiar adults. Um, this can be with a student's teacher as well as other family members, uh, other adults, uh, other adults that children know. Um, this is a goal for children and the preschool age that they form uh, secure attachments with and relationships with uh, adults that are around them and that they're able to socially interact. Um, number five, social emotional development. Five is symbolic and social dramatic play. So this is linked to the other video about learning through play, um, children using their imagination to create a certain play within their environment, uh, within the materials and toys that they have around them. Um, are, is your child uh, able to do those things is what um, this goal is asking them for. I'm going to fold this over that way it's easier to maneuver. The next uh, four goals for the DRDP modified version would be the co cognition. Uh, this is how we think, this is how we problem solve, uh, mostly math concepts for our preschool students. Uh, we have cognition two, which is classification. Is your child able to sort? Are they able to sort by color, by type of toy? For example, if you ask them, grab all your toys and let's sort them all by superheroes and animals and uh, Paw Patrol, are they able to sort the toys into those different groups? And then like for colors, you would do colors um, you can also sort by what objects in your home have alphabet, what objects in your home have numbers. Um, the next one is cognition three, number sense and quantity, which is knowing um, your one-to-one -one correspondence, knowing that one is one and that five equals five fingers instead of one finger, um, things like that. Number sense also is uh, knowing the order of the numbers as well. Like you would start with one through five or zero through five and then zero through 10. And as they get better and know all their numbers, then you would up those numbers up to 20. Cognition number four is number sense of math operations. And this would be your basic uh, foundation of I would use just going up to five objects. And we have, usually we have five fingers on our hand. And if you don't, that's okay. Um, but um, I like using um, number operations up to five because you can easily use your hand to do these number uh, equations with uh, your children if you don't have manipulatives of, or certain types of toys at home that can be used. Um, so you would use five and for example, number sense of math operations would 
look like this. So if I have five, you would ask your child, how many fingers do I have? And they would count one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I have five. This is a high five hand. So if I take one finger away, now how many fingers do I have standing up? And then them having a great understanding and grasping this concept and knowing how to count after a while of practicing one-to-one -one correspondence, they would be able to count, oh, four fingers, you have four fingers. Okay, and then if you put a, five, five, a high five hand up again, and you take away two fingers, now how many fingers do you have? And then they would be able to count one, two, three, three fingers. You could also pretend your fingers are other objects too. If you don't have manipulatives at home, you can pretend that they're people, you can pretend that they're animals, you can pretend that they're pretty much any object that you would want them to be. Um, and this also ties into that symbolic uh, social dramatic play as well. Um, so you're hitting two goals with one um, activity. The next is cognition six, which is patterning. Um, oops, and I combined six and seven. So patterning is, you know, knowing how to do patterns. And the most basic way that we do patterns in pre-K is with colors. Um, as they recognize their colors, you can work with colors and if they don't know their colors, you can go ahead and make a pattern that is like red, green, red, green, red, green, and then you would ask them what comes next. And with that, they would be able to respond to you if they know how to do patterns after working with them a few times and showing them how to do patterns they would pick up the concept, oh, red comes next. Um, one of the easiest ways to do this and the cheapest way to do this is with construction paper from the Dollar Tree. Um, and you can cut up little squares and then, or little rectangles and make patterns, color patterns with your child. Um, as they get, more advanced in their skills and they get to know their shapes or their ABCs or their numbers. You can also do patterns um, with shapes um, and numbers and ABCs as well. That's more complex though. And then you can move into different types of patterns. So you have the AB pattern, ABB pattern, AAB pattern, AABB pattern and then so on. And then you can add a third item once your child gets really good at mastering this skill. Uh, cognition seven that's um, combined right here by accident with um, patterning is cognition seven, which is shapes. So being able to identify certain shapes um, that is a math concept in cognition for our preschoolers. I'm gonna do this one first. So we have the next uh, domain, oops, sorry, is language and literacy development. So the first one is understanding of language, which is the receptive language. And the receptive language is basically, it talks about the brain being able to process language and receive and process the information that they're hearing. So um, your child might be working on expressive language or they might be working on receptive language. Receptive language comes before expressive language. So they might still be in that quiet observation phase where they're taking in language, they're listening to language, they're trying to understand it, they're trying to increase their vocabulary and their confidence and then once those skills have been obtained, then they're able to move into the LLD3, which is communication and use of language in the expressive form, which is our oral verbal vocabulary that we use um, with simple words, uh, single words, double words, and then short sentences like 
uh, one to forward sentences and then long expressive sentences. So it goes in stages. Um, and if you have more questions on that, please send me a message and I can send you more information on communication and use of language for express expressive language. Sorry, my tongue's getting kind of tongue twisted today. Uh, then we have the LLD4, which is reciprocal communication and conversation. So this is like um, communication loops, back and forth communication and conversation. So your child has to have the skill to understand the language, be able to receive it receptively and be also able to express the language in a back and forth conversation with whoever they're conversing with. Uh, then comes, and then that also, involves answering questions as well, being able to process that information. LLD6, which is comprehension of age appropriate text. So if you're reading a book to your child and it's a picture book and it's a preschool level book, um, most likely if you ask them a question about the book, are they able to understand what is going on in the story uh, or within the pictures? That is what uh, LLD6 is talking about. LLD8 is phonological awareness. Oh, and there I did another typo. Ugh. I got LLD8 and LLD9 uh, together. But So we have LLD8, which is phonological awareness, which is the sounds that letters make. Um, so for example, when they see a letter A, they can say, oh, that's in my name, that's a letter A. And then you can ask them, well, what sound does the letter A make? And then they can say, the A says, ah, ah, the A says, ah. And they'll be more than happy to share that knowledge with you once they're at that level. Um, and not every child will be at the same level in, in different areas. So um, they can be in different levels in, in different uh, language and literacy development. So um, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong. It just means that they're not there yet and that they will get there with practice. And when they're ready, their brain has to develop at its own pace. And we start wherever and whatever level they're at is where we start as teachers. And then we help guide them to get them to the next level. Um, and as parents, you do the same thing, so. The next one is LD9, letter and word knowledge. So within comprehension of age appropriate text, you can point out phonological awareness to your child and you can also point out letters and words. And then as you're pointing these out with time, your child will say, oh, look, there's the letter A or there's the letter C, that's in my name. Oh, there's the letter K, that's in my name. Um, and that's the most important um, word that we start with is with your child's name because it has meaning to them and it's important to them. And that means that they're gonna be engaged and intrigued and in learning more about their name. And so when we're teaching phonological awareness and letter and word knowledge, we start with their name first um, and they can learn so much within their name and that is our stepping stone and then that's where we um, start off with and then we move on from there. Also with emergent writing as well, um, we start off with writing their name with the LLD 10 emergent writing the next the last goal for the modified version of the DRDP. We have the emergent writing, um, which can start off as scribbling. Um, sometimes they could just put a few dots on the paper and that is their writing and we have to acknowledge that that is their writing. Um, even though for us as adults, we may look at it and be like, oh, well, it's just dots on a paper, but to the child, they are attempting to write their name and we have to acknowledge that by giving them um, specific feedback, uh, praise with specific feedback, such as, oh, look at you tried to write the letter A. Uh, good job in trying to write the letter A. You tried so hard, I'm so proud of you. Um, even if it just looks like a little dot or a little line. Um, with time and as their hand develops and with given fine motor skills to do, um, fine motor activities to do, your child will develop in their emergent writing skills and it will go from dots to lines to maybe shapes to scribbles um, or scribbles and then to shapes. 
And then once they're ready, you'll see that they'll start forming random letters and then they'll be able to eventually write their name when they're ready. But honestly, writing is not really a preschool goal. Emergent writing is, which is scribbling and drawing and making lines and drawing shapes, things like that. Those are preschool goals. Uh, if your child is in preschool and they are able to write their name, that's great. That means that their hands and their fine motor skills are a little bit more developed than others. But um, don't be worried if your child is not writing their name and they're in preschool. Um, they will get there. And when they're ready, uh, they will get there. If you have more questions about this, please contact me and let me know and I'd be more than happy to, to help you with that. Um, the next goals are English language development goals. These are if you are an ELL learner, an English language learner, and if uh, English is not your first language, then these goals would appear in the modified version of the DRDP. So the ELD one is comprehension of English. So this is the same as receptive, but it is specific towards the English language. Just the same as ELD two is self-expression in English, in the English language. Um, ELD three is understanding and response to English literacy activities. So if we are reading a book that is in English and your child is able to answer questions about that book in English, that is where this goal uh, comes into place. And then ELD4, symbol, letter, and print knowledge in English. Are they able to recognize the letter A and say that's the letter A and they call it by the letter A in English, not A. Ah is la letra A in Espanol, and print knowledge in English as well, okay? So that is the modified version in a nutshell of the modified DRDP. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer them um, off the video. Um, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, bye.